Greetings and Shalom, all Israel. Greetings and welcome to part two of this uh, video on holy speech. Okay, so in part one, just to remind you, uh, we looked at the the fact that we, well, we all speak a lot, don't we? People speak a lot. It's a popular pastime of most people. Okay, so it's not surprising then that the holy scriptures. The inspired word of the Almighty, the Most High God of Israel, has a lot to say about speech, about how we, should, you know, about the content of our speech, the, the the heart behind our speech. The scriptures shed a lot of light on that, and we looked at some of those uh, key scriptures in part one. Okay, here in part two, we're going to continue in this theme of speech, holy speech, set apart speech, which is what holy means, set apart. All right, set apart speech, uh, but we're gonna with an emphasis now on what I call swordplay. Why do I say swordplay? Because anybody who knows um, the scriptures will know that the word of God is likened onto uh, a sword. In fact, sharper than any two-edged sword. Okay, so what we're gonna focus on in this video is. The fact that, yes, we, there is um, the word of God, which is the mightiest sword of them all. But that the words of the wicked are also likened onto swords. The words of the wicked are also likened onto swords. OK, so basically, when you, you, many, many times when you're in dialogue with someone, sometimes unwittingly or unknowingly, you're actually engaging in a sword fight and didn't know. All right. So what we're going to do is bring out those scriptures that shed light on this to ensure that we're very skilled with the sword, i.e. with the word. All right. Uh, so we'll, we'll, we'll definitely uh, come on to that, most certainly. All right. So welcome again. Uh, Shalom. Uh, another Israel Awake uh, video. Um, and by the way, that's what we're all about here at Israel Awake being used as an instrument by the Most High to awaken the children of Israel in these last days, all right? Uh, and also to educate um, those of other nations who are also aware that the true Israelites are awakening in these last days, all right? And want to know more, perhaps want to know more and learn more about that, all right? So welcome, um, and let's get straight into it, shall we? Okay, so let me share my screen. Okay, um, let's go. One second, bear with me. All right, good to go, good to go, good to go. All right, okay. Um, let's kick off with Psalms 55. All right, so I'm using the King James Version throughout. All right, Psalm 55, right? Verse 20 to 21. Let's get that. Let me read that. Okay. On screen. Okay. He hath put forth his hands against such as be at peace with him. He hath broken his covenant. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter, but war was in his heart. His words were softer than oil, yet were they drawn swords. Just giving you a snippet here from the scriptures. OK, of here we've got here somebody who is a covenant breaker. And then when it comes on to his words, it says that his, his mouth, yeah, the words of his mouth were smoother than butter. So a smooth talker then. All right. And you get that a lot, don't you? You get that in life. You come across people like this. Smooth talkers, very smooth talkers, but their intention, their agenda, their ulterior motive is one of war. All right, or destruction of some kind. Yeah, definitely, definitely not for your good. All right, so that's why we're reading here. Um, the words of his mouth, this is verse 21, the words of his mouth were smoother than butter, but war was in his heart. His words were softer than oil. So, yeah, yet were they drawn sword. So, this is a, this is, this is treacherous. This is a deceiver. All right. 
people can come at you with smooth talk, yet with an evil intention. Um, words soft, right? If you if you want to be easily taken by words, you'd be easily taken, right? Yet were they drawn swords. Swords are designed to do injury. Swords are designed to cut, to pierce, yeah, um, lethally. All right. So very, very important then. Yeah, these words. You know, there's um there's an old saying, isn't there? That you know, and, and it's a lyric as well, isn't it? That sticks and stones might break my bones, but words don't bother me. All right. Well, to an extent. But words most certainly can do a lot of damage, almost certainly. All right, a, 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 a lot of damage. All right, I won't labor the point on that just now anyway. Okay, so let's, let's explore further. Let's explore the pages of the scriptures further to find out what else we can find out about words, yeah, and its association with swords and vice versa. All right, so we can really get a good understanding of this. And so that we can be very aware and very conscious of when actually the di a dialogue that we might find ourselves in um, could actually be sword play. Um, in which case you'd have to be very, very skilled. Otherwise, you better you could come out of the conversation heavily wounded. Yeah, even lethally wounded, even fatally wounded. All right. So um, it's important that we get a good understanding of this and get it right. OK. All right, so let's move across then to Psalms 57. Psalm 57, let's get some more. Psalm 57 uh, and verse four. All right, okay, on screen. My soul is among lions, and I lie even among them that are set on fire, even the sons of men, whose teeth are spears and arrows, and their tongue a sharp sword. Okay, so again, this picture, this imagery, yeah, the tongue being a sharp sword. So a tongue being used to cut and slice and pierce with, a piercing tongue, yeah? Um, so we can see that, we can see it coming through the language here in the scriptures. You have a choice of words and phrases here. All right, let's keep exploring. Let's keep exploring. Let's go to, um, one second. Yeah, let's go to Psalms, Psalms 64. Let's go to Psalm 64. All right. Uh, and in verses three to four. Okay. Let's go. Psalm 64, um, starting verse three. Who wet their tongue like a sword and bend their bows yeah, the bows to shoot their arrows, even bitter words, that they may shoot in secret at the perfect. Suddenly do they shoot at him and fear not. So here we have a picture, all right, of those who speak bitter words, yeah, aiming those words at the perfect, yeah, at the devout, at those who love the most high. All right, so let's read that again. Who wet their tongue like a sword. Here we go again, tongue like a sword, and bend their bows to shoot their arrows, even bitter words. See that? The, the, the militarization of the spoken word. That they may shoot in secret at the perfect. Suddenly do they shoot at him and fear not. Yeah, a great picture there of you know words um, being ammunition um, being swords all right okay um, so it's it's quite clear in the scriptures let's go somewhere else to find more of this type of imagery from the scriptures all right very revealing all right very revealing um, let's go to psalms um, there's quite a lot of uh, information here in the Psalms. So Psalms 140, let's go to verse three. All right. They have sharpened their tongues like a serpent. 
adder's poison is under their lips. Silah. The reason why I've gone here is again to um, look at the image. You look at how how the tongue is uh, yeah is is pictured yeah as 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 a as a weapon. It's been weaponized. A weaponized tongue. They have sharpened their tongues. You see that sharpened to cut with like a serpent. And as poison is under their lips, yeah, poisonous lips, yeah, lips of death as opposed to lips of life, lips to break down and destroy as opposed to uh, lift up, yeah, and let live. All right. So very clear then, this imagery of words being used as weapons. All right. And we saw it for the most part coming from the wicked. Because the words of the wicked are also swords. The good news is, although the wicked have swords um, in terms of their usage of words, okay, well, the word of God is the mightiest sword of all. And so those of us who align ourselves with the word of God, like it's written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. You read that in places like Matthew chapter 4, verse 4. All right. For us, let it be known that we, we wield the mightiest sword of them all. All right. Let's find out a bit about that. Okay. So let's go to Hebrews. The book of Hebrews. All right. Let's go to chapter 4 and verse 12. So Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12. For the word of God is quick. Now, quick here, by the way, let me just pause there. Quick, it is, this is the old, the old usage of the word quick. It, it doesn't mean here quick as in you saying bolt quick. Yeah, it's quick as in alive. So the word of God is alive. His words are not dead. They have power. It's active. It's alive. You see, when you when you speak the words of God, long after you've stopped speaking, the words are still acting out the purpose for which they were uttered. It's still working. The power of the spoken word is still at work. Such is the power of the word of God. That's why when you're speaking the words of God, you're not just speaking. You're prophesying. You know, often people think of prophesying as predicting a future event. Yeah, with, you know, with divine, divine revelation. All right. But actually prophesying is whenever you're speaking the word of God. That's why when Ezekiel was told to, you know, the valley of the dry bones and he was told to, for example, tell the wind to come. He was told to prophesy onto the wind. He was told to prophesy onto the bones. Yeah, speak unto them the words of God. Yeah, he prophesied, thus saith the Lord, thus saith Yahweh. All right, so it's important to get that right. Whenever you're reciting the words of God, you are prophesying. This is important. And it is active. It is quick. The word of God is quick. So I just wanted to establish that while the spirit led on that. So for the word of, for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. All right? So we see that. Word of God is quick, powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. Sharper than any. Do you see that? So it's more lethal. It can cut more deeply and more efficiently and more effectively than the swords of the wicked. It's important to know this, all right? It's important to know this, yeah? At the end of the day, the most high God of Israel will always have his way. And if we truly trust in him, and actually we, we begin to realize that there's no need to have any fear of the enemy, all right? All praises, Israel, all praises. All right, um, so, that's Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. So with that in mind, wonderful definition here. 
of the of the of the sword of the most high yeah the word of god as as the sword all right so let's just um continue with that theme so let's go over all right let me get up on the screen let's get ephesians ephesians chapter 6 and let's go straight to verse 17 because what we're going to do here is look at part of the armor of god because ephesians 6 many people know ephesians 6 as the armor of god all right so ephesians 6 17 and take the helmet of salvation right one part of the armor and the sword of the spirit which is the word of god and that's the bit i want to emphasize for this particular video for this message yeah that the sword of the spirit is the word of god yeah so the spirit has a sword because it's the sword of the spirit the spirit has a sword and that sword is the very words of the most high yeah and that's part of our armor yeah in fact if you think about the armor the armor um you know for those who might need to refresh or are not aware of this like right, in ephesians chapter 6 it actually talks about an armor a spiritual armor that we have all right the helmet of salvation the breastplate of righteousness i'm not going to go into these now that's not the purpose behind this video but just to make you aware the breast the head of salvation breastplate of righteousness the belt of truth shield of faith yeah um the uh, feet shod with the, the the gospel of peace all right and a sword which is what we just read here yeah the sword of the spirit which is the word of god now interestingly every other part of the armor is 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 defensive all right you don't attack with a helmet you don't attack for the most part with a shield it's not known for that i mean you could take a shield and hit somebody over the head with it I mean, yeah, yeah we, we get that. But I'm sure you get my point. For the most part, it's seen as a defensive piece of the armor. Yeah, it's designed to, um, if you like, shield you, which is why it's called the shield, shield you from the, either the enemy sword, arrows, or whatever the, um, you know, the, the, the weapons may be. All right. Um, belt is, is not seen as, a, you know, in, on the battlefield. Yeah, you could take it out. <laughs> yeah but you get the point it's not a, a, an offensive weapon um in that in the battlefield context all right uh, and obviously you know um if you like boots of peace uh, again not necessarily what you think of as a, an offensive weapon on the battlefield um i'm sure you get the point but the sword that's the one offensive weapon in the whole armor of god pictured in ephesians chapter six because you see there's a season for everything you can't always be on the defensive in a battle sometimes you have to be on the offensive all right and i guess there's a whole message in that uh, in and of itself all right but just to just to make the point that the one part of the armor which can be used on the offensive is the is the word of god itself the words of the almighty yeah good all right so it's clear then that the wicked have swords in terms of their words and the righteous have the mighty sword yeah sharper than any two-edged sword which is the word of god so when these two are in a dialogue debate argument what have you there is a spiritual sword fight taking place so to see it like that, and clearly the scriptures wants us to see it like that, um, is a very interesting image because what it then means is it takes practice to be a good sword fighter. Um, to develop your skills, your stance and all the rest of it. You don't just jump up one day, pick up a sword, and away you go, and you, you, you're the expert and you know the, the mightiest warrior on the battlefield. It takes practice, discipline, 
Yeah. And that's what you find. The analogy that the scripture uses is perfect. And it's not surprising because it's the inspired word of Allah Hayyam. Yeah. Of Yahweh. Yeah. The God of Israel. So, of course, it was going to be a perfect picture. And it really is. All right. So, let's follow this analogy of the sword being aligned with the words. All right. So that, so that perhaps we can become better swordsmen, so to speak, yeah? So let's do that. Let's um, find out how to be skillful in our use of words. What does the scriptures teach us? What can we learn and glean from the pages of the Holy Scriptures to help us to be more efficient and effective in the usage of our words, to be more skilled? swordsman all right so let's do that proverbs let's um go over to proverbs okay so proverbs uh i want to go to proverbs let's have a look proverbs 10 proverbs 10 uh i think that's the one i want uh proverbs 10 and uh, verse 19. okay Yep, so let's have a look at that. Yep, this is what I want. So Proverbs chapter 10, verse 19. In the multitude of words, there wanteth not sin. But he that refraineth his lips is wise. Yeah, he that refraineth his lips is wise. To refrain is to draw back from doing it too much. Discipline, applying some discipline, control, to refrain, yeah? So it's not just let loose and let, let wild, yeah? Refrain is his wife. So this is, this is teaching us something about how to use our mouths in terms of speech, All right? Very interesting, yeah? Let's get some more. Let's get some more. Um, and what you'll find is um, there's... Quite a lot to be said in the book of Proverbs. Not surprising seeing as Proverbs are wise sayings. So by all means, let's get some wise sayings out on this whole topic of speech. All right. Um, so let's go over to Proverbs, Proverbs 17. So Proverbs 17. Okay. Um, let's have a look. Proverbs 17. Let's go, I think verses 27 to 28, but let me start with verse 27. Yeah, so Proverbs 17, verse 27 uh, on screen. Let's go. He that hath knowledge speareth his words, and a man of understanding is of an excellent spirit. So this links to the, the, the previous proverb, really, that we saw in Proverbs 10. Yeah, he that hath knowledge speareth his words. You know, there's another there's another phrase: um, empty barrels make the most noise. Yeah. Um, so it's so true, isn't it? All right. Um, those who know don't really have to say much. They don't have anything to prove because they know. But those who don't really know often speak a lot because they try to fill the void, the gap, the emptiness. They've got something to prove because they don't know and they feel uncomfortable with that. They try to make out that they do know. They have to be very vocal about it, lest they be found out. But of course, those who truly and genuinely know don't feel they're not insecure don't have to keep talking about it yeah so he that have knowledge speareth his words so again to keep your mouth running yeah going at it like the clappers is 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 frowned upon in the scriptures it's not seen as wise it's not seen as knowledgeable it's not seen as disciplined all right and actually can get you your, your mouth can get you into a lot of trouble all right and we saw some of that principles coming out in part one all right 
You, you know, um, on that point, let's go over to um, James. I'd like to go over to James on that one, right? That's, um, and then we'll come back to some more pr uh, proverbs, all right? Well, let's go to uh, James, because um, there's, a, there's a principle that I'd like us to um, appreciate. So James, chapter 1, verse 19. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. You see that? Um, again, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm one for um, picking up phrases along the way, you know, and uh, most of you would have heard of this one, that, you know, we've got two ears and one mouth, and therefore we should use them proportionally, i.e. to listen twice as much as you speak. Two ears, one mouth. All right. And this principle, you can see right here in James chapter one, verse 19. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, be quick to hear, but slow to speak. You see, a lot of people are swift to speak, but slow to hear. They want to be heard, but don't want it, but don't want to hear others. Yeah. Perhaps want to dominate the conversation. Want to be the center of attention, a central attraction. All right. Well, that's not wise. Yeah. Let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. All right. So I just wanted to pull that out because it's uh, it's a uh, it's a complementary scripture there. All right. Um, let's now take a look at Proverbs. Let's go to Proverbs. Proverbs 26, all right, uh, and verse four. Have a look at this. We're getting more information about how we can be skilled swordsmen. Proverbs 26, verse four. Answer not a fool according to his folly, lest thou also be like unto him. Get that? So another thing, if we're going to be skillful swordsmen, skillful swordswomen, all right, then we shouldn't just be tit for tatting with every foolish remark. You shouldn't be bringing yourself down to the level of a fool, as described in scripture. Yeah, answer not a fool according to his folly. Don't toe to toe. Don't bring yourself down to that level. Yeah, let's look at the warning. Lest thou also be like unto him. You see, uh, if, if you're a skilled swordsman, it's not going to reach for the sword every two seconds. They're going to reach for it when, it when it when it counts, when it matters. They're not going to waste their energy on foolishness. As a matter of fact, when they draw their sword, it's for good reason, and and um, you know, and it's because they they intend to use it. Pretty much, yeah. Um, so you don't want to be reaching for your sword out of its sheath, your, your spiritual sword, every two seconds. That would be very draining. That's actually not a very wise way of using the sword. Yeah, not a you, not yet. So that principle is brought out here. That truth is being brought out here in Proverbs 26, verse 4. What else can we learn? To make sure that we are well skilled in using the sword, of the sword, yeah. Um, let's go then. Let's go to Proverbs 15. Let's have a look there. Okay, so Proverbs 15 and verse one. It's good to be looking at these things right now, Israel, because if not now, then when? What are we waiting for? It's time to get these biblical truths out. Um, so that we can we can we can learn from the scriptures um, and, and and refresh ourselves and refine ourselves and prepare ourselves for the coming of the king. Because as I love to say, king soon come, the king soon come. All right, and we went this time now. You know, we want to endure until the end and be ready for what for come what may. All right, we've been told that we need you know always be ready to give an account for why you believe the things you believe. We we learn we learned that in Peter. Um, and to contend for the faith. Yeah, we're told that we, that comes across it like in Jude. All right. Um, 
So, getting skillful with the sword is a good thing to do in this time. All right. So Proverbs 15 um, and verse 1. A soft answer turneth away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. So again, that's, that's a great teaching, isn't it? Because sometimes you don't want to be somebody who's always in a fight, always in an argument. It's draining, often distracting, distracting you of what really you should be doing. All right. So sometimes, you know, you know, remember, we're led by the spirit, the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Not so much. We're not we're not interested in being led by the ego. Yeah, we're not into ego fests. Yeah. And the clash of the egos. We're not into that. Sometimes if you can see it's a foolish argument, sometimes a soft answer. Sometimes if you rise to it, and you know, you, you get your back up and they get their back up. They snarl, you snarl. They blow smoke out their nostrils. You blow smoke out your nostrils in, in it because, you're, you're, you know, you're so, um, you know, upset, vexed. Yeah. Then, you know, you. You don't, if you fight fire with fire, all you'll get is a bigger fire. Sometimes what you need to do is out the fire with some cool water. And that's what's coming out here in Proverbs 15, one, yeah? A soft answer turneth the way wrath. Do you know, it's extremely difficult to have an argument with somebody who keeps responding soft and cool and calm and collected. You could be, if you're shouting, yeah? Rah, 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 you're shouting. All right. And the other person is just responding in a very cool, calm and collected manner. After a while, it's going to drain you as the shouter. All right. I mean, not in all cases, but for the most part, because you see, it takes two to tango. Yeah. It's 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 a, it's almost like a role play. Right. It's no fun if the other person isn't shouting back. It doesn't fuel it. Yeah. One person shot and you shot, now you're fueling it. All right. But that's why it's saying it, a soft answer turneth away wrath. All right. But grievous words now stir up anger. Now, don't get me wrong. Are we saying here that you always must give a soft answer no matter what? Always? No, no one's saying that. Sometimes the spirit will even lead. Sometimes you will need to, to, to come with a stern word. Yeah. Or, 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 or a stern rebuke. Sometimes that will be needed, all right? The point is knowing when to apply, being guided when to apply in the right scenario, situation, and circumstance, all right? If you're always um, re replying a shout with a shout, you're replying to a shout, you know, with a shout, then that's not the most efficient way of using language and communication and speech, all right? That's not the best way to conduct yourself. And 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 to always do a soft answer is is is, is not going to be is not is not always going to be the right thing. The thing is, is what what outcome are you looking for? If you don't want an argument, then using grievous words and words that are going to offend isn't probably the best way to go about stop, you know preventing an argument. So it depends. Yeah, if you're wanting an argument, fair enough. Then grievous words, okay, great. But if you're saying, you know, if you're if you're genuinely saying, you know what, I'd rather not have an argument about this right now, right? Then you would employ a soft answer and not feel the situation, right? These scriptures, you know, everything that we need to know is embedded in these scriptures or praises to the Most High. Um, let's see what else we can find out. All right. In fact, linked to this soft answer is um, sweet speech, knowing when to use sweet speech. All right, well, let's get that. Let's go to Proverbs. Proverbs 16 and verse 21. The wise in heart shall be called prudent, and the sweetness of the lips increaseth learning. Why would it say that? Why would the sweetness of the lips increase learning? See, if this all goes back to when you're in, the, in, in a conversation or in any form of dialogue, all right? What outcome are you looking for? 
Because see, all right, let me give you the scenario of a classroom. There's a classroom. Uh, and there's a child struggling to get uh, a point that the teacher's trying to make. So the teacher goes over to the desk where the child is sitting, the student is sitting down, and barks at the child. Yeah? You stupid idiot! Right? Pay attention and maybe you'll get it! All right? Now, now, okay, so the teacher has rebuked the pupil. Is, do you honestly believe that that pupil now is in the right frame of mind to suddenly start taking in the lesson? Um, and are we expecting a, 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 a turnaround all of a sudden where this pupil is now going to be the star pupil of, of, of the classroom for the day? I think you'd be pushing it if you think that's going to be the case. I put it to you, more often than not, the teacher who's barking after the child has succeeded in embarrassing the child because often the, the other kids will laugh or snigger. Yeah, we've all been to school. We all, we all get the point. We'll either laugh or snigger, yeah, and even bully and tease afterwards, all right? Um, and the, the child in question, embarrassed, ashamed, probably starts clamming up, starts, you know, starts putting walls up, starts blocking everything out and, and all the rest of it. All right. Whereas sweetness now, the sweetness of the lips, if the teacher had gone over, maybe with more encouraging words. Yeah, I'm not going to necessarily you know, break that down for you, but you get the point. Instead of coming with that harsh, of, you know, that harsh rebuke, actually, maybe with something a bit more encouraging. Yeah, a bit, you know, you know, hey, um, you know, I have seen you do good work in the past. I've seen you do best, so, um, you know. Um, let's uh, let's see what can be done here today. That type of thing. You get the point, all right? But how you approach people and how you know, your, your, your words you use, the tone you use, it all comes into it, doesn't it? It all affects the outcome often, all right? So again, by, learn, by learning these things from the scriptures and applying them makes us more skilled at using words, more skilled swordsmen, all right? Uh, uh, let's keep let's keep exploring. Uh, let's go over. Yeah, let's find another way of using words. Yeah, let's go over a positive way of using words. Let's go over to Isaiah. Yeah, so Isaiah chapter fifty. All right. I want to go to verse four. Let's go to verse four. Isaiah fifty verse four. Okay, on screen. The Lord God had given me the tongue of the learned, that I should know how to speak a word in season to him that is weary. He wakeneth morning by morning. He wakeneth mine ear to hear as the learned. Right? So we're getting some snippets of some very valuable truths here. Let's just have a quick look at that again. The Lord God has given me the tongue of the learned that I should know how to speak a word in season to him that is weary. The tongue of the learned, the learned of the wise, the tongue of the learned. Yeah, that so I should know how to speak. So there's something about knowing how to speak a word in season. So something about knowing how to speak, or something about knowing when to speak, how and when. Yeah, the content. Yeah, and the timing. Yeah, to him that is weary. So actually, you can lift somebody up. Just by knowing how to speak and when to speak, somebody who's weary, tired, drained, you can lift them up. You can lift up their spirits. Yeah. This is we're learning here how to use words effectively and efficiently. Yeah. As the children of the Most High, powerful stuff. Yeah. Not forgetting on the flip side, on the you know whatever happens on the right hand side, you've also got left hand side. You've got the light workers, you've got your dark workers, yeah. So for those who are into witchcraft and all that type of thing, they know this. They, they, why do you think they cast spells? Cast spells. It's all words. You spell a word, don't you? You learn how to spell, which is cast spells. It's all words, incantations. Chance, yeah. So 
it's all about, yeah, as opposed to, you know, prayers, supplications before the Most High. Yeah, there's a, there's, satanic, there's a satanic counterfeit to that. Right? What about the use of words? It's important that we, get, that we need to really appreciate that, especially in these last days. All right? Okay. Um, let's find out some more. Let's go over to Ephesians. Back to Ephesians. Well, not chapter 6 this time. This time, let's go to chapter 4. So Ephesians 4. All right? And verse 29. Okay, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. You see that? So we read earlier, just in the previous um, chapter of Isaiah, chapter 50, verse uh, 4, that you can use um, word by learning how to speak and when to speak, yeah, um, to even help the weary. Now, and now I love the way it's put here, just very clear. Yeah, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. Yeah, there should be nothing corrupt about the way we use our speech. But that which is good to the use of edifying. So we want to edify the listener. Yeah, that's what we're really about. That's our real agenda. Yeah, we're not really out to crush and destroy unnecessarily. All right, we're here to edify. Yeah, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. All right. And that's why even the words we speak, um, you know, needs to be taken into account. Yeah. And, um, you know, even and, and, you know, make sure that you're not engaging in foul language. All right. And I know I know that words change over time. All right. The, the whole etymology of words and all the rest of it. But, you, you know, the, let think about just think about your the, the listener. Yeah. There's no point in you using. Um, swear words and justifying it because once upon a time it didn't mean that and it's got to be offensive today but it wasn't really, you know people will hear you today and understand it based on how it's used today all right so using f words and, and all the rest of it all right um is to stray from scriptures like this all right we've got if if, if you know if we're truly about the mole site Right, then we're gonna, you know, we're really, we're really gonna go all out, aren't we? We're really gonna go all out to be the best we can be. Remember, he did say, Be holy, for I am holy, perfect because I'm perfect. Now, we know in and of ourselves we can't do that, but we can do all things through Christ, through Hamashayak, who strengthens us. All right, so let's not lower the bar. All right, let's not lower the bar. Let's, yeah, so I'm lowering the bar. Let's do our best, yeah, through Yahawashaya Mashayak to strive for better. We can all do better, and that includes how we speak and the language that we use and the words that come out of our mouths. Right? It's important, Israel. Right? So that's Ephesians 4, verse 29. Um, again, uh, when it comes to speaking and how we speak and what we say, uh, let's get um, a few more scriptures here. Let's get to Pro let's go to Proverbs, see what we can learn here. It, but Proverbs 11. Yeah, let's go back to Proverbs again. Proverbs 11, uh, let's go to verse 12. Okay, so Proverbs 11, verse 12. He that is void of wisdom despises his neighbor, but a man of his understanding holdeth his peace. Mm -hmm. Let's now move over to verse 13. A tale bearer revealeth secrets. But he that is of a faithful spirit concealeth the matter. So, another, yeah, with more information about speaking and, yeah. A skilled swordsman will not divulge private information willy nilly. But it's trustworthy, yeah. They can be trusted with a secret. They're not a gossip, not a tale bearer, yeah. Reliable, dependable. But, yeah, you get the point. So, again, we're not using. So, to be a tail bearer is to allow um, corruption to come out of your mouth. And we, we saw, don't let any um, corrupt communication come out of your mouth. Tail, tail, you know, this, this tail bearer with this, you know, with this um, mischievous intent. It's not often with a mischievous intent. We're not just talking about the, the, the valid, um, you know, 
sharing of information. Yeah? But those who, who, who see it as a form of entertainment, yeah, uh, at somebody else's expense, often, all right? You get the point, all right? We, we, we're not engaging that, all right? Okay, so um, we see that principle there. Um, so what is the very best thing we could be doing in speech? What's the best thing you could actually say? Yeah, well, what's some of the best things that you can actually say? What's the best way to use your sword? Yeah, um, because the scripture does touch on, on that. And let, let, let's go to, let's go, to, let's go there. Let's go here, right? There's, there's, there's a few places, but here's, here's a really good um, one that we should always uh, bear in mind, all right? So we'll start with Romans 10, verse nine. Romans 10, verse nine. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, yeah, the other one, Yahweh Shai, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Thou shalt be saved. All right. And let's uh, go to verse 10. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth, Confession is made unto salvation. Did you see that, Israel? Yeah? With the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. So we need to be confessing using the mouth. Not just thinking it. You see, this is it. Not just thinking it. Not even just believing it. But using the mouth. Literally verbalizing these things, literally uttering the words, speaking these things out. Uh, sometimes we miss this. Yes, I think sometimes there isn't enough emphasis uh, on this. So let me just go back to verse nine to really bring this point out. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. So you, we shouldn't just, it, it, when's the last time you confess with your mouth? Yahweh Shaya Mashaya. That he is Adawan, as in Adawan being the paleo for Adonai, meaning Lord. Okay. It's good to think it. It's good to, be, of course, it's good to believe it and think it. But when's the last time you actually verbalized it? To yourself or, you know, in your own secret time, and you say, you know, Yahawashai is Adawan. Do you know they'll, just that simple words alone is enough to cause demons to tremble that might be passing by? That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth. So we're told to confess with the mouth. You see that? And that's one of the greatest things you can do in terms of the utterance of speech. The most great way of using speech is the confession of Yahweh Shaya Mashayak, Malak Nau, Malak Yashwal. All right. OK, OK. I think one more uh, scripture now, Israel. All right. Let's go to let me go over here. Let's go to Jude. Just to um, cap off um, the good use of speech. Uh, Jude. And I mentioned this earlier, didn't I, Jude? Uh, Jude uh, one. And let's go to verse three. So verse three of Jude. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. I mean, I mentioned this earlier on in the video, to contend for the faith. To contend merely means to, to defend it, to struggle to, to, to maintain it. Yeah. Uh, and again, when you do line upon line, precept upon precept, and bring all the scriptures together, you'll you'll learn that there's there's a place and a time. All right. But our default position is to contend for the faith, to speak up for the faith. Yeah. That's a good use of, of the mouth. Not as an ego, not as a clash of the egos, not to prove how much you know. All right? But to be loyal. To the God of Israel. 
yeah, in service to him and in service to your brothers and sisters with all meekness and humility. All right, so it's getting that balance right. All right, okay, okay. I'm going to stop that there. That's the end of part two. Um, for those who have not seen part one, um, I would encourage you to do so. All right. Um, because um, we did look at some really um, interesting scriptures that shed a lot of light. Yeah, that do shed a, a, a lot of light on the topic. So I would encourage anybody who has not seen that to please do take a look at that. All right. Um, if, like I always say, if not now, then when? All right, we're living in these last days. We can see prophecy fulfilling all around us. Okay, so um, it's we see that very much as our goal at Israel Away to get the children of Israel ready, prepared, yeah, to fulfill our duty to do so, to get the word out, yeah, um, and to carry out, carry out the task that's been set before us. All right, so that's what we're all about. Um, and happy to do that, privileged to do that, honoured. It's an absolute blessing to, um, you know, serve um, our brothers and sisters in this way. All right. So in terms of the content um, today, yeah, I would encourage you to do indeed to think about it. All right. Um, and pray about it. OK. Um, and let's see if we can spread the word together. OK, so just some closing scriptures. On, on that, on how we can all work together to get this word out there, so that so, you know, to equip our people, all right, God's people. All right, Matthew chapter nine, verse thirty-seven to thirty-eight. Then saith he unto his disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous, but the labor laborers are few. Pray ye therefore, the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. All right. So um, yes, indeed. All right. Come and join us to help bring in the harvest, the harvest, the harvest of souls. Yeah, the, those Israelites who are right now um, to return back onto the God of Israel, back onto their God uh, and, you know, on that path to, um, you know, uh, redemption and salvation. All right, excellent. Proverbs 11 verse 30 says, the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life and he that winneth souls is wise. So it is therefore wise to win souls. So let's do that. Let's do the wise thing uh, and win, win souls. All right. Um, First Corinthians chapter three and verse nine reads, for we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry. Ye are God's building. So we're laborers together. So let's do indeed labor together to get this word out. All right. Third John uh, chapter eight says we therefore ought to receive such that we might be fellow helpers to the truth. So, yes, indeed. Let's be fellow helpers to the truth. All right, and get this word out there. All right. Uh, and Matthew chapter 24, verse 14. And this gospel, good news, glad tidings of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. All right. That's making it clear that the end of this current age, this current world order, as we know and experience it and understand it today. Yeah. It's demise. Yeah, is intricately linked to what's happening now in terms of this word going out. So this is actually fulfillment of prophecy. As this word is going out and it's been preached in all the world, yeah, for witness unto all nations, and it's happening through um, all sorts of platforms, including this YouTube platform. All right, it's happening, Israel. Therefore, even a greater sign that we're coming to the end, the close of this world. Exciting times for us, Israel. Exciting times. We've been at the bottom for so long. Yeah, the bottom of the social ladder. Yeah, pushed down, kept down. You know the rest. All right. Well, the, world's in, the world is, is in for a great shock coming up because things are about to change. The balance of power is about to change and there's nothing that anyone can do to stop that because it's the Most High himself, the creator of heaven, the heavens and the earth. Yeah, who is doing this and his will will be done. There's no stopping or frustrating or circumventing his will. All right. So good times. Um, good times are here, Israel, actually. All right. If we will endure to the end, just keep the faith, keep the commandments. Remember, he's our secret place. So take refuge in him. All right. 
So um, that's pretty much all needs to be said. So um, how can you share this word? Um, well, if this video has done anything for you, please like it with a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. All right. And when subscribing, you know, do click on the full bell to ensure that you receive all notifications. OK, that way you won't miss any videos when they're uploaded. OK, and as always, if you've got any questions, queries, anything that you want to reflect on, anything at all um, to, you know, related to these last days, related to the scriptures and uh, um, our Israelite identity, then please feel free to send an email that israelawaken7 at gmail.com. Okay, that's Israel Awaken and the digit number seven at gmail.com. All right, so with that, I'm going to leave that there. I'm going to say Shalom Yashrala. Yeah, all praises to the Most High. May He continue to bless and keep and guide and heal and protect you and yours. All right, so until next time, Shalom.